Well, there they are. So now the trick is to get enough of the junk off. Because you really don't want to put this stuff in your parts cleaning tank. You know, there's just no reason to have that kind of stuff uh, diluting it down and sediment filling it up there and stuff like that. So, boy, somebody has definitely uh, done some work in here. They beat the hell out of the end of the, the thing. At first I was thinking, oh, my rubber mallet was was damaging it, but that's not the case. Because <laughs> the other one looks the same way, and I never touched that one. When you're looking at your parts and stuff like that, how do you know what you you got your hands on here, okay? This is the lower control arm, obviously. But this right here is the shock absorber, or the uh, sway bar mount, okay? So that means that's the front. The other indicator is, see this... Uh, big washer here that's spot welded on and the bolt hole that is for the torsion bar arm connecting arm to, to bolt onto here and then the torsion bar uh, it's lying on the inside and the torsion bar fits in there and that's where the uh, suspension connects okay uh, I will keep track of the, um, the fulcrum pin nuts here a lot of times you can tell which one's front and back because of the uh, zerk fitting, but these both have zerk fittings. And holy cow, does this have some grease? Look at that, man. There's there's a good half inch of at the thickest spot there, which is makes it nice for getting it off. So I'll have to mark the pins and stuff like that to take them off. Now as far as telling on the, uh, as you get them apart further, you know, if they stay like this, it's really easy to tell that this is the passenger side, okay, and I'm standing on the front side. Uh, okay, so if you look at that, you should be able to make out how the, the spindle backing plate is tilted that way, okay? The top is tilted to the back. That's the caster, okay? That is built in to the uh, dog bone, the kingpin inclination. Uh, and, and I think if you look also here, I'm not sure if the camera's lined up perfectly or not, but this center here is not centered with this. Okay. Um, same on the bottom, too. So this whole thing is twisted, and it's twisted on the kingpin. Uh, we'll look at it again when this comes off, but this should be... The spindle itself is the same piece left and right, so the angle is built in to the dog bone, and then therefore the dog bone is different left and right. Now I'm sure they use the same casting, but when they machine it, uh, you know they make it bigger and then they machine those angles into it, and that way they don't have to make a left and right casting. They just make one casting and machine it for left or right. Okay. Same thing with the parts on the. Uh, uh, lower control arms here. You know, there's no left and right shock bracket or anything like that. Uh, that's the other tell there is that's the tension control rod mount, okay, and the cup faces toward the front. So as far as the steering arm goes, these are front steer, okay. Um, so our sway bar mounts to the front, so this is on the front. Now, if you're familiar with Ackerman angle, uh, the Ackerman angle is the angle created starting back at the, the center of the differential, or the center of the rear end. Not all differentials are centered in the car, but uh, uh, the center between the springs and the axles, okay? Uh, that comes up and draws a line to here and goes straight through, and it should line up perfectly with the steering arm, the tie rod hole, uh, when this thing is set driving straight down the road. And the fact that on front steers they're separated like that, okay, that is what, when you, when you go around a corner, the outside one doesn't move as much and the inside one turns tighter because this is going on a bigger radius, smaller radius. Okay, that's what does that. On a rear steer, these arms will be on the inside, okay, because the line from the rear end will come through the tie rod end point first and then line up here. Uh, so... So, 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 enough of that. Um, I guess now it's just a matter of 
knocking off a bunch of this crap. So uh, I can take them, stick them in the uh, parts cleaner, and get them cleaned up. Uh, to finish taking them apart, I got to take the fulcrum pins apart, get that cotter bolt out. Hopefully that won't be a nightmare. One nice thing about greasy parts, uh, typically they're not very rusty, and if they're not very rusty, then a lot of times they come apart a whole lot easier. Uh, we will see as it goes. But these are some of the, this is some of the thickest uh, caked on grease I've uh, seen on one. There's some good thick. It's kind of nice that it just pops off in chunks then, but. So, okay, well, you know, as long as we're tearing things apart here, let's, uh, I think you can see it well enough. There's another lock plate down here, which they didn't bother to lock. Uh, they should find one of the flat sides here and bang that up and lock it again so it can't come off. parts get cleaned and reused. Uh, and then to get the steering arm off, you can typically just uh, tap it over. It is a nicely machined part. It's cast and then machined and it fits up in a slot under here uh, very accurately and very tightly. So that has to come off in order to get the kingpin out. Um, but I gotta get I gotta get a lot of crap off of here first. Little crap. One other thing I wanted to point out here, I already took the, the steering arm off that side. Uh, but okay, so we know that steering arm's toward the front. There's one other angle here. All right, if you if you look at that you can see that it is angled up and that's because the lower control arm runs at a downward angle along with the tie rod uh, when it's at stock ride height okay so uh, those are those are put at an angle um, so if you separate them then it's easy enough to see that you know if you put it on the the spindle this way with the spindle poking out that would be rear steer because that angles in so that one's going to go there. Now, as far as which one goes left and right, uh, when it's with the spindle, does it go on this spindle or this spindle? Um, that has to do with the angle here. So with the spindle poking out, this is for the passenger side, okay, because that angle's down, uh, you know. So... Part of that is me explaining it. Part of that is me putting it on video so that when I go to put this thing back together, all these pieces, I don't have to label every little piece. I can I can go back and look and say, okay. And if I can't remember, then my reference is the video. I go back and watch it again. So. I'm, I'm wondering if uh, how the needle scaler would work. You know, if it would knock this stuff off pretty nice. Well, I think that's clean enough. Throwing the dunk tank for now. Parts cleaner. That's uh, the, the the gooey ones. That stuff uh, dissolves fairly easy. It's this it's this hard stuff that uh, doesn't want to dissolve that well because you got to. Soak it for a little while and it breaks down one layer, and then you gotta uh, you know wire brush that off, scrub it up so that way this stuff can soak into another layer. All right, let's go throw these parts in there just to get them started. See, when you head over to the dip tank, as long as you don't have the parts cleaner tank, as long as you don't have any tears in the gloves, it's real easy to clean them up, rinse them off, and then you dry them off. The rag's a little damp. Still good for wiping grease, though. Okay, let's uh, 
I guess we'll take the arm off the other one. And it's kind of funny because uh, whoever did this didn't do... They did the lock tabs on one side, not the other, so it's almost like they quit. But the other side definitely had some work, so I would tend to say they just simply forgot. some of the maybe I can let these soak in the parts tank for you know like a couple of days and do something fun in the meantime okay uh, I'm making new cutter bolts for the bottom here, so I really don't care about having to get those out, so that takes a lot of worry and frustration out of the process. At least for me, I've never had really good luck uh, getting those bolts out. The cotter bolt uh, for the kingpin, they come in the uh, kit. So the only thing I'm really concerned with saving here is the uh, shims that are in the uh, kingpin there. So. I do want to be a little careful around here because I, uh, I did take a bit of a look and it looks like the rubbers are okay. I don't have new rubbers. I uh, can't get new rubbers. So, all right, so here's our nut back here. So let's uh, get some area cleaned around it. I'd rather take it apart and get the rubbers off and then clean this heavy stuff off before I go gouging up and tearing the, the rubbers, the seals. Uh, old school VWs, I believe, uh, has a nice workaround with the MG parts. Yep. Uh, you know, <laughs> I kind of broke loose. It just dawned on me, though, there's a lot of... Uh... I'm going to tap that back in there. I'm going to try to get these... Uh... Um... The big nuts off the sides here first. That would... Uh... That would probably be beneficial. Ooh, moss. Nice. Inch and an eighth. Nice. Now I'm going to try it with this one. This battery is... In the yellow. Let's see what it does. Nice. That was fairly easy. Okay. Now, it also helps too sometimes when you're working on stuff like this to figure that, you know, that's the front side. Just, just pick a side of the table, label it, whatever. That's the front side. So this is the front side. This is the front side. I can set that over there. Um, <laughs> well, that's not bad. I got a air one that goes way, way harder, but uh, heck, you know, no point using it if the uh, cordless works. 
Now, a couple light taps, that thing should pop out. We'll. Oh, yeah. These are anodized. Uh, these have got a black oxide coating on it, so um, they're not. They weren't, they're not the original factory ones. So now what we gotta hope is that yes, nice. See that? It's it's pushing out the other side. That was my concern. Bit of a pile up of tools here. Let's just elevate this some. And I'm hitting on the front side. Well, I think that's binding it up a bit. Yep. Okay, so there's the there's the front one, there's the rear one. I'm just going to set it over there with that orientation. Ah, for now, oh, actually, let me get a scribe, carbide scribe. Okay, this is the front, so this is the driver's side. Uh, so that's the left side. So I'm going to put an arrow, and you don't want it scored up too bad, but this isn't a rotating part. Once it locks in there, it's fine. So I'm going to scratch in the arrow. and an L. And that'll try to make sure that it's still there when I'm done cleaning. Uh, the caps I'll worry about a little bit later. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be able to come in and out or not. And, and you kind of see what I'm doing there? A lot of guys know that trick or whatever, but you know, some, it won't necessarily go on right away. So if you walk it around, it'll find a flat spot and self-center itself instead of having to come up here and turn it with a second hand. So you can see it's got a bit of a bend in it. It could be reused if it had to be. But that's definitely got some squish to it. Uh, like I said, I got brand new ones, so not even going to mess with it. Alright, and that's the front side. So there's the front in my left hand. Let's get the scribe out. The other was for the left, this is for the passenger, so it is for the right. Okay. Front nut. Got the arrow pointing. It says right side. Now you notice the holes there. Uh, the grease goes in the end of the cap there. Squeezes through the tube until it meets resistance and then squeezes up here because I've explained in another video how these, let's make sure I got that right, yep. These nuts are locked to the arms and this is locked to the spindle. So as it goes up and down, it does this. Okay, so there's got to be grease in these threads. That's why the hole's there. The next thing, and usually the most aggravating part to get loose is this uh, cotter right here. So since the work has been fairly recent, I mean as in the last 40 years, um, I'm kind of thinking this may uh, go fairly easy. Okay, I'm going to try to get right there under the lip. Voila! So we'll look at that again after it's uh, been cleaned a little bit. The rubber's actually still still supple. It's not cracking when I uh, squeeze on it. So that's a really good uh, that's a really good sign. And 
And that's what I'm looking for is that lip right there. Seam. That is awesome. Yeah, that was not in there correctly. <laughs> it's like they put it in, they didn't get the flat spot lined up correctly and uh, just hammered it in or something. Yeah, that's not, uh, that's not good, but the kingpin gets replaced anyway, so. Next. Okay, just as a reference, I have used this one with a two pound sledgehammer with this up in the vise being held, just beating on it, uh, to, you know, for all I was worth to get a couple of these out before. This is by far the easiest they've ever come out. I keep hearing stories about this, but it's the first time for me. That is just awesome. So a lot of times, you know, I would have cleaned these up better to start with and then done a lot of the work up on uh, the vise. Uh, a lot of guys don't have vise stuff like that, so um, I'm trying to kind of do this down and dirty um, so that the normal Dotson enthusiast who, you know, has limited facilities and tools and everything like that will not be quite as intimidated about doing these. Yeah, there's some really bad hairy ones out there, like I was telling you about with them being stuck and everything, but uh, you know, this one, this one just looks bad. Okay, now that's not good. It's got a lip sticking up there. Uh, that means that it could have gotten water and corrosion in there. Kind of looks like it's sealed. It's good for us at this point because I'm thinking I should just be able to take the corner of the chisel and catch that. So let's see. You can drill the hole in there, put a screw in, tighten the screw down, try to get it out that way. Smaller uh, chisel might work better too. There we go. Just had to get a nice hold on it. Oh, hey, you know something? <laughs> I got the bolt out. Let's try it this way. This just may be the easier way. We'll just put it up like this. We'll hit it down and see if we can't just drive the cap out. And I should probably just go get the two pound hammer. I meant to do that. Yep. Okay. Looks like it's coming up a little bit there. I don't think this has gone down yet. I just think that uh, it might have been starting to work. So putting this in the vise and having something solid under here uh, would be better. But we'll, we'll see if we can do it this way.
<sighs> Part of the reason for using a smaller hammer and stuff like this is it breaks less bones <laughs> when you miss. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if we can zoom in there. All right, see that gap there? I've split it enough that we have a gap between it and the head of the kingpin there, so. what chisels are good for and uh, widen the gap. There we go. All right, so yeah, I'll probably put both of them in. You get to see a really easy one and a really hard one. I wonder what the chances are of this one uh, popping loose. Now, realistically, instead of denting the hell out of the top of my table, I should probably put a, another piece of steel down there, but it's moving. You see that? It's moving. And instead of having my finger between here and here, which... So I'm not putting my finger in here because when it hammers, it'll slam it, so I'm pulling it up against it. And it's still straight up and down enough because the kingpin leans back a little bit. So... The other one off the table. Oh. Okay. See it coming out the bottom there? And you know, a lot of this manual stuff is uh, for the sake of the video for the most part because you know, uh, I would have put it in the vise or taken it over to the press, <laughs> let it do the work. Uh, but I have the opportunity to. Uh, this one's kind of special, because this is the Canby truck. So, on top of the truck going to get, you know, going to a new owner, that kind of stuff, um, that owner will get to see, you know, the work, the work that's been recorded and stuff like that, uh, that went into their front end. Uh, I think that, um, there's pictures and some other stuff going on with the rest of the truck. Um, but since I do videos anyway, I figured this is a chance to... Uh, show some more kingpin work, which I've got documented in like 30 or 40 videos, the whole step-by-step -step process. Um, so this one, uh, it's not necessarily a step-by-step how-to. Uh, it's more like a, just look at what it went into your truck uh, for the uh, new owners of the Camby truck. All right, we're down past the, whoops, we're down past that. So at this point, <laughs> it should come apart. Okay, definitely want to save the, the shims. There's the bearing. 
Oh, bearings actually in good shape. Boy, I've pulled them out where they are just would not turn. And if you hadn't noticed, where the fulcrum pins are, it looks totally different. Okay, this is way beefier. Uh, so it's on the bottom of the truck where all the load is. This is the top for the upper control arm. Um, and then obviously the spindle has an up and down because the steering arm goes on the bottom. So now. Now, uh, I wonder if we can get the pin the rest of the way out. The answer to that is yes. Oh. One disassembly, two disassembly, three disassembly. Oh, I wish it went that fast. Oh, oh, that went down the hammer. I just barely touched. Had it been up any more, I would have just blood blistered and pinched the hell out of that. Oh. And then we would have been uh, explaining some new words. All right. There we go.